What's going on, everyone? Sergeant Arbert here, and today we're reacting to. Can I scroll down? Thank you. Napoleon, Part Two: Conquest of Europe by Geo History. Yeah, pretty cool. Where we left off last. Jeez, I don't remember. I only remember bits and pieces. There was the Siege of Toulon. Um, Napoleon. He was 16, and he was automatically like an artillery commander. Um. He did a bat. He did a bunch of battles at Egypt and the Middle East, and then yeah. Oh yeah, he attacked in Italy, and in Austria, and Germany. Yeah, everywhere, or the whole Roman Empire, I should say. But anyways, let's get started, guys, on part two. Pretty France funky. and its Spanish ally are at war against the United Kingdom. Napoleon's great army, or the so-called Grande Armée, is gathered along the Channel coast, ready to invade the island. Ooh, to this end, luck. Napoleon asks the French Mediterranean fleet to head for the Caribbean to lure the powerful Royal Navy. They must oh. then rush back to the English Channel to facilitate <laughs> a military landing. But upon their return, the plan fails. The French uh -oh. fleet is spotted and attacked along the Spanish coast, forcing its retreat to Cadiz. Oh, I know what happens here. It's bad. But Napoleon, the recently named French emperor and the king of Italy, has already changed his plan since the United Kingdom convinced Russia and Austria to form a new anti-French coalition. The British would finance oh. the war. Oh wait, never mind. I thought that was whenever the ships were all destroyed and then Britain was going to be the main power of the seas. Austria sends an army to Italy and a second to Bavaria, where the Russian army would join. Also, oh, these borders are kind of weird. What the heck? Napoleon then sends his great army at full speed to Bavaria in order to arrive before the Russians. He organizes Ooh. a diversion by sending an army corps into the Black Forest, where the Austrians wait, ready to fight, while the main battalion of the oh, army no. gets around them in the north. The oh my Austrian gosh! Army discovers too late that they are surrounded. Five days later, 25,000 soldiers surrender without a fight. Meanwhile, Napoleon orders his fleet, still blocked in Cadiz, to join the Mediterranean. Oh, this is where that happens. The French and Spanish fleets try to end the British blockade, but are destroyed by the fleet of Admiral Ooh. Nelson, who dies during the battle. With this victory, the United... Oh, goodness. Oops, what the heck? What in the world just happened? Anyways. The United Kingdom reaffirms its maritime supremacy. Mm. In Austria, the Russian army... Also, guys, I'm probably going to react to part two sure. and part three, just to make up for the fact that I haven't really made that many videos recently. So, yeah. And hopefully both of them should be uploaded today, as the time I'm recording towards the northeast to await reinforcements, paving the way for the French to Vienna. Meanwhile, oh. in the south, a second Austrian army is defeated and retreats. Napoleon seizes the Austrian capital. He decides to leave oh, a wow. big part of his army there and leaves with 60,000 soldiers to meet the army of Alexander I of Russia, which has received reinforcements from Francis II. As he is outnumbered, Napoleon decides to station his troops on the strategic plateau of Pratzen. He studies the field and devises a plan. On the evening of December the 1st, Oh, it's the Battle of Austerlitz! As the Austro-Russian army approaches, he orders his troops to retreat, pretending to flee. The army of the Allies jumps on the opportunity and seizes the plateau for the night. Mm. The next morning, convinced that the French are retreating, 40,000 Russians charge towards the south. The outnumbered French army tries to hold them back best as they can. But further north, hidden behind mm. the hills, the bulk of the French army launches uh -oh. a surprise attack and takes back the plateau. The Austro-Russian the Russians are screwed. army finds itself split in two. The Russians try at all costs to take back the plateau, but fail. The army in the north is pushed back. Oh my gosh, they're going to take a whole bunch of losses trying to take the plateau. Meanwhile, the Russians are cornered. The east, while the French surround thousands oh. of Russian soldiers oh. in the south. 
Russian troops panic and surrender or try to escape on frozen ponds, which are targeted by French artillery fire. Oh With my the god! French victory complete, the Emperor of Austria negotiates That was peace. crazy! He loses control over the German states, marking the end of the Holy Roman Empire, which would gradually be replaced by the Confederation of the Rhine under Napoleon's protection. Napoleon appoints his brother Joseph as a king of Naples and his other brother Louis as a king of Holland. He also oh. begins the construction of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris to celebrate future victories. Prussia dislikes French management of the German state, uh -oh. so comes together with other powers to form a fourth coalition against France. Oh yeah, Saxony. Where's Saxony? I thought they were helping. Three Prussian armies enter Saxony and oh, an ultimatum is go. given to the French, demanding their withdrawal to the west of the Rhine. Napoleon goes to meet them with his great army. Initial contact is established. The French immediately get the upper hand, causing the Prussian armies to turn back to Leipzig. But the French army, which is faster, catches up and positions itself between the two main armies. Ooh. Napoleon then makes an error of judgment. Thinking oh. that the great Prussian army is in the south, he sends a small army of 25,000 men to the north. Oh, this is... Okay, this part is really interesting. They find themselves confronted by the great Prussian army of over 60,000 men. However, despite the odds, both battles are won by the French that day, opening the doors of Berlin to Napoleon. You know, something interesting... Um, the reason why Prussia did so bad, even though they're known for like being really good at military and everything, was because th they kind of got lazy over time, and they were using... they never really modernized either. Like, they were so used to their other military victories that they didn't really feel the need to get any better. They were, they were overconfident. Um, so yeah, and actually Napoleon, um, he was a really big fan of Frederick the Great as well. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. With Prussia defeated, Napoleon attacks Russia. Along the way, he enters Polish territory, which was captured and shared between Russia, Prussia and Austria 10 years earlier. The French are welcomed as heroes and thousands of people join the ranks of the army. Mm. The Russians avoid battle and retreat to await reinforcements. Eventually, the two armies start fighting. Two days of fierce battles and oh, causing like thousands of fatalities. Both sides are tested and need time to recruit new forces. Four months later, the Russians try to surprise the French by launching a frontal attack. But they are repelled and chased. Oh my gosh. A second decisive battle drives the Russian army beyond the Niemen River. Exhausted by war, neither side is able to gain supremacy over the other. A peace treaty is prepared. Both sides meet on a raft especially built for the occasion on the Niemen River, where Napoleon and Tsar Alexander I negotiate. According to the terms of the treaty, Prussia loses half of its territory. Its western territories are annexed to the half. kingdom of Westphalia, of which Jerome Bonaparte becomes the king. In the east, the Duchy of Warsaw is created. Allied with France, this new state could act as a strategic buffer in case of future war. Russia, on the other hand, gets the authorization to seize Finland. Finally, the two powers ally against the United Kingdom, which finds itself squeezed by French domination on the continent. Weakened by wars, the UK faces a difficult economic situation. And now, Napoleon tries to deliver a final blow by imposing a continental block. Oh, no yeah. European port may accept British commercial vessels. But not everyone agrees with this policy, including Portugal, a historical ally of the British. In response, Napoleon wants to invade Portugal. Its Spanish ally joins the offensive and allows French troops to cross its territory. The following month, the Franco-Spanish army seizes Lisbon, forcing the royal family oh, wow. to flee to Brazil. But after this victory, new French troops are sent to Spain. Napoleon begins to show a new interest in Spain, which is no longer the great power it once was. After a coup attempt orchestrated by Ferdinand against his father, King Charles IV, 
both go to Bayonne to ask Napoleon to resolve the situation. Meanwhile in Madrid, people rise against the French occupiers. The revolt Jeez, is violently put down. Napoleon then decides to place his brother Joseph on the throne of the country, while his brother-in-law Murat gets Ooh. the kingdom of Naples. Oh goodness, oh goodness. Yeah, the Spain, the whole Spain thing was the, probably the first of Napoleon's blunders. The French brutality in Madrid infuriates the Spanish population. Throughout the country, militias form and organize a guerrilla warfare against the French, targeting isolated garrisons and lines of communication. The French are tortured and slaughtered. In response, French armies burn to the ground villages suspected of harboring rebels. In the years to come, France would need to constantly strengthen its military presence yeah. to try and defeat rebel strongholds. In the it doesn't help that the French were really extremely rude, which only made the Monroe rebel more. South, a French army is defeated. In panic, Joseph Bonaparte flees Madrid with his army. The news spreads throughout Europe, reinforcing anti-French sentiments. Meanwhile, a British army contingent lands in Portugal. Napoleon wants to settle things himself with his great army. But fearful of being outflanked in the east, he organizes a meeting with the Tsar to try and strengthen their alliance, but in vain. He still sends part of his army to the peninsula, where the Spanish armies, divided and poorly organized, are crushed in a month. While advancing on the British army, Napoleon learns that Austria is ready to go to war. Leaving oh, his yeah. army in Spain, he quickly heads eastwards, where the Austrian army enters Bavaria. Austria is actually going to do pretty good this time. Or not extremely good, but they're going to do better. Because they actually learned stuff this time. Which is why initially they do pretty good. Also because of Spain. To be joined by Prussia and the Confederation of the Rhine, driven by rising German nationalism. Oh, nice. What is going on? Oh, no. I hope the recording is fine. I don't know how Wi-Fi affects the recording or not. Okay, there. We're all good, guys. We're all good. Yeah, it probably doesn't affect it. It's fine. What is it doing? Stop it. Stop it. Stop loading. Go back. In a month, while advanced leaders Bavaria, they hope to be joined by Prussia and the Confederation of the Rhine, driven by rising German nationalism. Oh. But it would not happen. Meanwhile, Napoleon asks Russia to go to war against Austria, which it declines. A fifth coalition is formed, but in fact, Austria finds itself alone against Napoleon. Within days, the Austrian army is divided into two. The main body manages to flee north of the Danube, leaving Wait, my Vienna battery. defenseless. Okay, it's fine. Napoleon seizes the Austrian capital for the second time, while the Austrian army positions itself north of the Danube. To complete victory, Napoleon must find a way to cross the river, but all bridges are destroyed. He begins building bridges and attempts to cross with his army. But a powerful Austrian offensive pushes them back to the island of Lobau. This is Napoleon's first major defeat. Oh, he moves no. back to Vienna to strengthen his army and organize a new offensive. In one night, he makes more than 140,000 soldiers cross the Danube. Jeez. Over two days of fierce and bloody fighting, oh, the Austrians retreat or and ask for an armistice. As per this unfavorable peace treaty, Austria loses many of its territories and its access to the sea. Moreover, Napoleon divorces Josephine, with whom he cannot get Ooh. legitimate heirs, and marries Marie-Louise, daughter of the Emperor of Austria, with whom he hopes to have a child. In France, Napoleon becomes increasingly authoritarian, Jeez. jailing political opponents, censoring the media, Whoa. and spreading his propaganda. Whoa. The economic situation of the country worsens. Wars, and especially the 300,000 soldiers stationed in Spain, are expensive and require a lot of resources. On March, yeah, and the blockade isn't really helping either. 
Well, I guess. I can't. Okay, that was a dumb thing to say. Never mind. Ignore that I just said that. The 20th, 1811, Marie Louise gives birth to Napoleon's much. Actually, yeah. Well, actually. Oh, yeah, the British blockade. The... <sighs> okay. Never mind. Just... Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Awaited air. The... I just confused you guys and I confused myself. Baby. So just ignore that I said that. Received the title of the King of Rome. In Ooh, Portugal, yeah, Rome. a new British army led by Wellington Ooh. takes over and pushes the French army away. The French army requests reinforcements from Napoleon, <clears throat> but these remain unanswered as he focuses all his strength on the Duchy of Warsaw. The relationship with Russia deteriorates, causing Napoleon to prepare for the invasion of the country. No! They just left us on a cliffhanger like that. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, well, they're from Belgium. And that's cool. Anyways. I'm also... And then... Make sure to watch part three. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. We're just going to talk about defeating Russia. And that's really cool. Anyways, yeah. Thank you all for watching, everyone. And goodbye. Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And, you know... Turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. Oh yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, and if not, better than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know or I have high and high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.